he also has integrity. And so it's my pleasure to bear with me. My internet is getting really epileptic, but I will, I will get I will get that sorted as, as we go. So we 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 mute as to, as we come in, and um, once we mute, we'll be able to have a seamless. The chat room is open so that you can have comments as well as questions. I'm so glad to host distinguished men and women uh, this afternoon to this all important subject, and we have a good good guest. His name is Oluwa Tosin Oluyemi, simply Tosin Oluyemi. And I'm going to uh, introduce him shortly. He's an experienced audit manager. Audit manager, uh, he's been in audit and assurance services to diverse clients across the financial service sector from mid uh, club size to private equity and investment and funds, microfinance bank, mortgage banks, e-payment, asset management, the works, you know, to large banking and large, uh, you know, you know, corporation. He has done that audit for more than 10 years in terms of experience working with global big four audit firms. He started working with audit, uh, had his audit career with uh, uh, KPMG in Nigeria, and is currently working with Deloitte in the UK as an audit manager. Over the years, uh, to Stoluemi has experienced progressively developed technical, interpersonal, ethical, practical management, business development, and ritual making about audit strategy and approach managing audit, engagement, and other projects, business development activities, and managing people for effective performance. Tosio Luyemi is a CMA UK qualified and fellow of ICANN, Institute of Charter Accountants of Nigeria, with extensive practical experience and highly skilled in financial reporting, finance, taxation, audit, business assurance, financial control, corporate governance, prudential and regulatory compliance, IF, RCS and technical accounting matter. He is certified and award-winning trainer, facilitator at KPMG, where he was responsible for planning, delivering technical training on various topics in audit, accounting, and related fields. He's a member of examiner's committee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome Tosin Oluyemi, FCA, and a lot of other certification. At the moment, he's audit manager at Deloitte UK, and he's going to be talking on a subject that is very, very, very intriguing. And you know, guess what? He's going to be talking on financial statements. How are they indicators of the well-being of an organization, whether for profit or non-for-profit? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to a very good time, and I trust that we are going to have a unique conversation this afternoon. Um, also, I'm sure he's going to speak in a language not just of angels, but of men. You see, because if he chooses to speak of angels, everything he will be saying will be something that non-financial managers will not be able to cope. And that is an area of challenge. If you don't know the numbers, is very business number is very unlikely that you are going to make a success of it. So on your behalf, I'd like to welcome Tosin Oluyemi to BSS as our guest number 36. Please, you know, join me in welcoming him. He's going to dwell on he's going to delve onto the subject and then we have interaction. And don't also go away. After that, we'll have the uh, if you like, the after party in which we can we can interact. Thank you very much, Tosin Oluyemi. You're welcome. Now to the subject of today. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for joining in today. Um, thank you very much, uh, Touchstone, Touchstone Business Sustainability Series team. 
for inviting me. It is a very great privilege to, to be presenting today, having learned so much on this platform. I remember this pl platform started about a year ago and since uh, that was when the pandemic started and every Saturday has been a blessing. It has been so much fun, so much to learn about. So, and we are going to also do the same today. There is a very interesting topic before, before me, which is a financial statements and indicator of organization's well-being. Um, before I start, um, I will also want to acknowledge my fellow colleagues, chartered accountants that are in the house. So I believe that if I didn't explain very well, you will help me. And I also want to um, acknowledge every other finance professional in the house and those who are joining from, um, from various, uh, from different places. So I believe it's going to be an interesting session for us. Um, before I start, I want to present my slide. And please, may I, uh, may I ask that the host should um, allow, enable me to be able to share my slide. I have a presentation. Hello. Okay. Sorry, can you can you can you can you go ahead and present the slide? Can you okay? You know, go ahead if it's, you have a host uh, disabled participants sharing. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll sort that out in a minute. Okay. Okay, great. And if you can assist to present from your hand, then that's fine. Okay, so basically the topic is financial statement as a well-being indicator of an organization. And in less than 40 minutes, we are going to discuss that. Um, if you have any question as we go ahead, you will note your question down then. When I finish the presentation, you can ask your questions. Any question that we cannot answer, or that I cannot answer, um, I believe my fellow professional colleagues in the house will be able to, to assist us to answer that. And if there is any additional observation or comment you want to provide, you can as well go ahead and um, provide it. Mike, can you check, of can you check whether you can share your slides now? Yes, um, check, I think so, yes. Yes, I can. Okay, can you all see my, my, yes, my screen? Yeah, 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 we can, we can. Okay, great. Uh, you know, just put it in, yeah, very good. Okay. Fantastic. So this 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 afternoon we are going to uh, discuss the definition of well-being. What does it mean, and why is it important to us? The financial statement. What is the meaning of financial statement, and what are the components of the financial statement? Then we will talk about the users of financial statement. What, is the comp what are the components of a financial statement? And again, we will discuss in details how financial statements indicate the well being of an organization, focusing on the liquidity indicators, operating efficiency indicators, solvency indicators, profitability indicators. I will say that don't be carried away with all the technical jargons. I'm trying to, I will try to be as very simple as possible so that we all follow through with the presentation. At the end of the session, uh, every one of us will be able to, to understand and explain the meaning of organization well-being. We will also be able to describe the basic component of financial statements we will be able to identify other indicators of organizational well-being, and we will appreciate how financial statements show the well-being status of any organization. Then we will use the financial statement to describe the well-being situation of an organization. 
after this. And also we will know how to use the financial statements to set appropriate well-being indicators for our own organization. Now, um, in this meeting, I'm not going to use any technical jargons. I will keep the explanation and presentation very simple and easy to understand. Since this is not an MBA class and there is no exam. So I just want you to follow the flow of conversation, right? Entertain yourself and have some fun, then learn as, as we go. It's going to be fun actually. So the only challenge I have now is the time. So I'm going to, at a point, be rushing through some of the information. But as I said, if you have any question, we, 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 we will deal with it at the end. Now, well-being has to do with the quality of life. Sorry, sorry. Trust yes. me, it's a, it's a drive through MBA. <laughs> OK, I understand. <laughs> that's, what, that's how we define it. It's a, it's a drive through It's a drive through no, no MBA. So go okay. ahead. Thank you. That's fine. So well-being has to do with the quality of life, you know, in the context of an organization that is, that is within the context of what we are discussing today, it connotes the health and soundness of an organization. It is the ability of an organization to deliver effectively and manage its current and future life. So well-being is determined or is shaped by different factors. Some of them include uh, the financial aspect of, of the organization, the ma market and competition, um, social aspect, regulatory landscape, technology and innovation within the uh, uh, environment where the organization operates, the people you know, that are in that organization. Now, if you have your phone or your, um, if you have your phone with you or you can access an internet explorer, let's do a simple exercise. So you can go to www.menti.com and use the code 301447. Alternatively, you can scan the barcode on the screen. I believe you are all ready for this. So go to www.menti.com menti.com and use the code. There's a question there for us to, to answer. Um, okay. I will, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So are we all there? So if you have answered the, the, the if you are there, you can just go to www.benty.com and answer the question that we have there. Sorry, what's the code, please? The code is 301447. 30, 30, you can as well uh, scan the barcode. Okay. The question is, what is the main indicator that shows you whether an organization is doing well or not? So you can select anyone that you feel is what tells you that an organization is doing well. Okay. I'm going to present the solution, the, the response that we have all, we have all uh, provided. Okay. Yeah. Good. Right. Yeah. 
Wow, this is impressive. So 83% says that the company financial statement tells them whether an organization is doing well. Some believe that about 17% of, the, of all of us believe that quality and product, of, product and service offering of an organization shows whether an organization is doing well. All right, so I think this, uh, the audience actually believe that just these two shows the main, the, they are the indicator of the well being of an organization. Okay, so we will find out as we, as we progress. Thank you very much for your participation. Now back to the slide. So it is very clear for us now that. Um, that the financial indicator of an organization is not only, it cannot only be seen from the perspective of financial statement alone, but our financial statement actually shows us the, the, uh, the financial health or what we can call the financial well-being of an organization while other, other aspect of the company, which is uh, the company, the reputation, the brand, the, the, the company's reputation, the brand, product and service offerings, the employees, management team, companies, news and stories that we hear about the company, the customers that they serve, the type of technology that the, that the company uh, adopts and the market and industry where the company operates can as well uh, uh, can as well indicate that indicate whether the company is having a positive well-being or not. Okay. From well-being could mean different things if you look at it from the human perspective and from a corporate organization perspective. So from the corporate perspective, it means a strong balance sheet position. And that is what we can see in this slide. If you look at it from human perspective, it means when you have strong bone, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy lifestyle, as you can see in the picture. But from we, today, we are looking at it from the organization perspective. That's from a company perspective and as well also from the financial uh, perspective. So when we say well-being, we are actually looking at the financial well-being of a company. Just as you have seen the young man there with the muscle, very strong, looking very, very heavy. It's also the same way you, if you look at this uh, balance sheet that is presented before you, this is a balance sheet of a, of, a, of a typical organization. I'm going to talk more about what a balance sheet is all about. And if you look at it, you see assets showing very strong, liability very small, and then you have the equity. Which, which is the, uh, the, the uh, equation that the balance sheet is trying to solve. We are going to talk about it later. So a strong balance sheet is an evidence of a positive financial well-being. While uh, if you look at the second slide where you have a sick body, headache, anxiety, and poor lifestyle showing as evidence or as indicator of a of a of an woman uh, of a poor woman well being woman a poor uh, of an ill ill being or poor uh, well being as the, as the case may be also for a corporate organization you will see poor financial performance uh, poor financial position indicated by uh, evidence by uh, uh, little assets compared to a liability little cash excessive debt. So, uh, continuous losses as um, the evidence of um, poor well being. Back to uh, going into now, looking at the concept that we have before us, which is financial statements. Financial statements are written records that convey the business activities and the financial performance of a company. So, as you do your business on a daily basis in every organization, uh, records are being taken of 
how the activity, if the financial affairs of the organization is going. So these uh, records, when they are put together in form of a uh, statement of financial position, which is popularly called the balance sheet, a statement of profit and loss or loss account, another comprehensive income, which can be called income statement or uh, profit or loss account, or, uh, and then a statement of changes in equity, which is more or less uh, a statement that shows the movement in owner's capital, plus a statement of cash flows. All of these are supported by what uh, is called the accompanying notes to the financial statements. These make complete set of financial statements. Now, who, the, the next question we want to ask ourselves is who are the people that are interested in the well being of, of an organization? They will ultimately be the people that are also. Uh, that are also interested in the use of the financial statements. And they include both what we can call the internal users and the external users. The internal users are those within the organization that make use of the financial records, financial statements on regular basis. It forms the basis of what they would use to work. Then we also have external users, which include the government, your tax collector, your lenders, news media, your competitors, your suppliers, or your, cost, your customers, they are the external users. And they are also interested in your well-being. They are interested in the well-being of any organization to be able to establish whether they are uh, in a position where uh, that they can transact business with. Then uh, we now talk about uh, these users of, of financial statement or those who are interested in the well-being of any organization have different objectives. And when they look at the financial statement, they look at it from different, using different lens and as well as their, uh, the, the way well-being, what well-being means to them will, will, will vary because of the interest that they have in, in the organization. Um, looking at the back to the uh, financial statements, when we say financial statement, then we are talking, we talked about the four basic components of the financial statement, which I, I said are the financial statement of financial position, the balance, uh, which is called popularly called the balance sheet, the statement of um, comprehensive income, which is popularly called the income statement or profit or loss account the statement of changes in equity and the statement of cash flow. So I will begin to talk about each of them just to describe it uh, in case you come across anyone. And again, for your, in your organization, you will see uh, something like this. So a balance sheet, just as you can see on the screen, is uh, a statement that shows the overview of a company's assets. It shows the liability as well and the share, shareholders' capital as at a particular date. So the balance sheet has, uh, is more or less divided into three basic components, which is the assets, the, the section that shows the assets. Then, and when you look at the asset, there are two types of assets, basically, the, and that is the assets that are there for the business for a long term that can be used for more than one year and those assets that are, are recurrent or that are current in nature, that is you get to use them to replace them again and again. They are more or less like a working uh, asset, assets that you keep using on, daily, on regular basis. So we have the uh, example of non-current assets, that's uh, those tangible, uh, asset that you can use for a long term. Then you have the property, plant, and equipment. Those are your motor vehicle, the building itself, your business premises, the intangible assets, and then the uh, assets that you cannot see, but you use them continuously, like your software and um, uh, your, your uh, intangible asset, like patents. If you have patent rights, is an asset. 
So these fall under those category, uh, those they are they fall under the category of intangible assets. Then you have the current assets, which are the stocks, the inventory, inventory, uh, your trade receivable. That those are the items that you sell, that that you are that the balances that your debtors are owing you after you have transacted with them. Then you have your cash and cash equivalents. Cash and cash equivalents here comprise of your cash that you have in the bank, as well as the one you have in the till in your in your in your word in your drawer, as well as any very uh, uh, liquid uh, short term liquid assets like your treasury bills that will mature that will mature in less than three three months. Those are your cash and cash equivalents. Okay, that makes up your total assets. Then in the same balance sheet, you have this, you have the section that talks about that shows the, what the business or the organization who the outsiders. So in this case, you have two types as well. Those liabilities that are for long period of time that are to be settled or payable over more than one year, those are non-current liability. And those that are supposed to be settled on a continuous basis within during the year or in the next 12 months, they are the current liability. And that is what you have there. So talking about borrowings, the money that the organization borrowed or uh, uh, borrowed from banks or from financial institution or from, from, so, from, uh, from some uh, creditors. Then you have the current liabilities, which include trade payables, what uh, the, the amount that is owed to uh, that, that you are that you is owed to your suppliers or to your business, trade partners, and then you have tax. If if they, if any organization is owing governments and they haven't paid, so these are also accounted for uh, uh, recorded under current liability. So that makes up the total liability of a company. Then you have the third section, which talks about which deals with the owner's equity. That is the capital that the owner used in setting up the business that is called the share capital and again as the business keeps operating from year to year all the gain the the the, the gain the profit that has been made which have been plowed back into the business and are accumulated as retained earnings those are the earnings the profit that has been earned in the past which are now accumulated together. All of these uh, retained earning belong to the owners of the, of, the, of the organization. So that also comes here to form what we call the total equity. So even looking at these three sections of a balance sheet, you see the assets, which is what the organization owns, the liability, which is what the uh, organization holds to an outsider, and then you have the equity, which comprise of the uh, of the of the amount uh, provided by the owners plus the accumulated uh, earn, earnings. So then, the second component of the financial statement is the profit or loss account, which comprise of the revenue, which shows the revenue or the income of the business and the expenses over a period of time. The third aspect, the third component of the financial statement is the statement of changes in equity that shows the movement in owner's capital. As I've said earlier, the equity relates to the capital provided by the owners and you have the share capital and all the changes that has happened. For instance, I talked about retain, the retained earnings the other time. So retained earnings plus the profit for the year minus whatever dividend, dividend are the return that is paid out to, 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 the, to the shareholders that out of the, um, the profit made. So the unpaid portion, the, 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 the out of the profit that is made, the portion that is not paid out to shareholders will form part of the uh, retained earnings. So that shows that is shown under the statement of changes in equity. Then we have the fourth 
financial fourth component of the financial statement, which is the statement of cash flow. It shows the way the company generates the, the cash from its operation. That's from day-to-day -day business, day-to-day -day running of the business. And then those cash that are generated and invested in investments, that is investing in maybe fixed assets or investing in uh, other assets that the, the other assets that generates those uh, those um, that are used for the purpose of the business. Then you have the third one, which shows the uh, cash that are invested or the cash that are paid back to uh, debts or uh, that are paid back to creditors or used to pay uh, to, to pay uh, those who provided capital for the business. So basically you have operating activities, investing activities and financing activities shown in the, in the statement of cash flow. The statement of cash flow complements all the information that you have seen in the balance sheet and income statement. As I've said earlier, all the numbers that is presented in the financial statement, they usually have a note that explains what each and every of those item represents and what they are made up of in terms of uh, the nature. Now, looking at what we have seen here, the financial statement as it is, is with the numbers and the tight and the title is actually talking about what the business is doing. I'll come back to the analysis of these numbers later. Now, the topic again is how financial statements shows or indicate the well-being of an organization. All the information that you see in the financial statement, be it the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of changes in equity and the cash flow, they are open to interpretation because uh, because uh, they are actually speaking. They are they are uh, they actually form a body of. They are more or less an expression of how the business has performed or what the uh, situation of the business is as at a particular date of which it was prepared. Now they are open to interpretation, and it is possible for you to compare performance and financial position of two or more organizations provided they operate in similar industry. And if they have applied same financial reporting framework. I promised earlier that I'm not going to use technical jargon, but I just want to mention that in, across different jurisdiction, there are different framework. Framework are those set of rules and guidance under which these financial statements are prepared. In Nigeria, the financial reporting framework is um, IFRS. That is International Financial Reporting Standard. In the US, the financial reporting framework is the United States Generally Accepted Accounting Principle, which is called the US GAAP. So there are very little different uh, differences in this, uh, in this financial reporting framework, but looking at the financial statements, they may look the same, but again, there are a few changes or a few differences in the underlying guidance that guides how those numbers that you see are put together. And again, we, you cannot compare uh, companies that are not in the same industry or that are not doing the same business together. You cannot pick a balance sheet of a bank and compare with the balance sheet of an oil company. If you do that comparison, you will be comparing, you will be like, you look like someone that is comparing tomato and um, an orange. Although they look the same, they are not the same. Or they, they, are, they, they are both fruits, but they are not the same. So uh, it is very, very important that we compare performance of companies that are similar. And why are we comparing? We are comparing their well-being. As I said, you are comparing how they have performed. You are comparing their financial position. You want to see whether one is having uh, is LD and whether the other is less LD. You want to see which of them uh, um, is, is, is profitable, which of them is strong, which of them has the muscle to carry um, 
bigger responsibility and, uh, and, and achieve greater growth in the future. Then uh, when, it, when all the numbers that you see in the financials are expressed, they are better understood if they are expressed in form of trends or in form of ratios and percentages. And they will give valuable insights for you to understand the financial health of the organization. So what I mean by that is this. So if you look at the example I gave, all the example that you have here, if you look at this, you see current period previous year. Looking at this, these are two years and this shows the asset position in the previous period and in current year. If you imagine that only one year is, if, if, you, if only one year is shown and you see uh, property plant and equipment as 128,790, it will make no sense to you or it, it make little sense because there's no basis for you to, to compare. But if you are saying pro property and plants and equipment last year was 109,000, and this year it is now 128,000. So the, it is easy for you to say, oh, we have bought more property and equipment this year, right? Then if you look at cash, for instance, cash last year was 8,600, 8, then this year it is 8,325. You can see, well, there has not been significant change in our cash balance, in our, in our level of cash holding in between last year and this year, you know. So if you also go forward, you will begin to see that when you compare financial statements from of one year against the previous year you will be able to understand trend, right? So that is why I said they give valuable insight when they are expressed in form of trends. When they are expressed in form of ratios, ratios are, are ways where you are, 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 are also very insightful because they will help you to, you, they, you, if you express those numbers against another number, like you pick some numbers in the profit and loss accounts in the income statements and you compare them Against the um, the against another variable in the same income statement, it will show you how the business is performing in terms of operating efficiency. Right. If you also express some of the numbers that you have in the balance sheet against one another, it will also show you how one of the uh, how, some of the indicators that we are going to discuss very quickly. Now, some of the useful indicators that you can get from the financial statements are the liquidity indicators, solvency indicators, operational efficiency indicators, profitability indicators. I'll quickly talk about liquidity indicators. Liquidity indicators, just from the word liquid, I don't want to be very technical, but honestly, these are big English. So liquidity indicators are just showing you how quickly is the business converting its cash. How, uh, sorry, how quickly the business, how, 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 how well, uh, how, how liquid the business is in terms of cash. What is the level of cash that this organization has? Solvency indicators are those indicators that tell you the level of the, the ability of the company to manage its debts. And it also tells you how well this company is managing its, uh, its, its debt level and uh, the, the level of capital that the business has. Also, we have operational efficiency that talks about how well an organization is being run. And then we have the profitability that talks about how profitable, what is the uh, level of earnings that this organization has. So because of our time, if we look at liquid, liquid, liquidity indicators, for example, we have three examples here, which are the working capital. Working capital expresses the ratio, the, the, uh, expresses the level of capital that you have, the level of um, 
resources that you have to manage the day-to-day -day operation of the business. So here we can see that the, for the example that we have, the working capital is an expression of the, uh, the liquid assets, the liquid capital that you have, that is the function of cash and the stock and the stock, which are the inventory that you sell on daily basis against the, 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 cash, the cash that you have. So when you look at all of this, you, it tells you the extent of working capital that is available, right? Then current assets, which is more or less like uh, is, is expressing the, the, the very, the, 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 uh, the cash, the cash that you have against your current liability. So he's saying that your current liability from my explanation was are those, are those liability that you need to pay within 12 months. Then your current assets are those assets that you, are, you can realize within 12 months. And they include your cash, they include your, your, your your stock, your receivables, those are those balance items in the balance sheet that you can quickly collect in less than 12 months. So when you express them together, uh, when you express them against each other, that is, you say current assets over current liability, that gives you what we call the current ratio. Now, looking at the current ratio of this particular organization that we have. So last year, it was two to one or 2.1 then this year it is 1.3. So it is an indicator that, hey, we are not, we, we, we need more cash or probably, again, another way to also look at financial statement is to, is to look at those ratios and compare them to what you have, what is required in the industry or what is obtainable in the industry. So you can say that, for instance, the standard is that all your current assets or the standard practice is that your current asset should actually be, be like double of your liability. So in this case, where you have 2.1, 2.1 as your current ratio is showing that you have two times, you have times two of your cash of your current asset of assets against your liability. But in the case of current ratio is showing that you have 1.3, that's one third, one, that's uh, 1.3 times of your current liability. So if you are benchmarking it against standard best practice, then it shows that you need to inject more cash. Although relatively it still looks good because uh, um, you, you, your, your asset is still, your current asset is still more than your current liability. Then the asset test ratio is looking at your immediate cash, the cash you have right now without considering your stock or your receivable against your current liability. And looking at this also, you can see that it is 1.3, which is telling you that you have more cash compared to as, as against your current liability. But again, last year was better because last year's cash was like two times your liability. Okay. Then um, the, next, the next indicator that the financial statement will also show us is when we compare them in a ratio, when we express those numbers against each other are the solvency indicators. So solvency indicator, as I mentioned, are those indicators that shows you the relation that shows the relationship between your your, your debts and the and, and the way that shows the indicator of how the company is financed and how this plays out in the in telling you uh, how close the company is to 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 being uh, to, to, to 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 meeting his obligation. As, a, as, as an organization. So you have one of them as debt to equity rich, uh, uh, indicators that talks about the number of times your, your equity can cover your debts. So in this example, you have 0 
showing that showing that your company is uh, your, your 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 the debt that you have is just about uh, 15% of the total equity that that uh, that's total equity means the capital provided by the shareholders right so and if you look at it compared to last year you see that your debt level was high last year it was was 19% or 0.19 as against the equity but this year it has reduced meaning that possibility that some of this debt has been paid and also uh, looks more like an improvement that you are paying your debt and again it's, it's, it is a factor that can be also be interpreted in a different way. Because if you look at it from another aspect, <clears throat> it shows that you can actually borrow more funds to finance the activity of your business. And what that means is that you can, you can uh, make use of external capital. Then you also have um, other indicators like uh, debt minus assets. So, so debt asset ratio, you have fixed asset coverage ratio, 248. So I would quickly talk about the, the other indicators that we have here, which is the operational efficiency indicators. So this talks about how efficient the organization is being run, especially if it's a trading organization. Inventory turnover, for instance, is talking about how quickly, how many times you, you, you buy and sell your stock. So if you ask uh, for a trading business, for instance, that buys in the supermarket and sell, how quickly do you buy, sell, and then replenish your stock? So that's your inventory turnover. Then every collection period talks about those number of days that it takes you to collect your money back from those that you sell, on, you sell to on credit. So this could be an, for instance, looking at this, as I said, when you express these numbers against in, against prior year, you will see the trend, and you can see that this year was was uh, last year was better than this year for this particular organization in terms of every collection period, for instance. So this is expressed is, is usually expressed in days, and you can see that every collection period in previous year was eighty two days. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so every collection period this year. Is 37 days showing that there is an improvement this year because as an organization you're able to collect your receivable what you sold to your customer you're able to collect it um, as quickly as possible within 37 days compared to last year where it was co it was uh, collected after uh, in 82 days average so then you also talked about the other indicate other ratios that indicate the operational efficiency of an organization is the total asset turnover, average credit period, current asset turnover. When you see turnover, turnover just uh, is calculated in form of in the in the in in the uh, in the unit of times. Talking about times, how many times you. Uh, for instance, in the case of total asset turnover, how many times your uh, your um, your receivable can can uh, can cover you, the total asset that you have, right? So then you also talk about the average credit period that talks about how many times you are able to uh, what number of days you are able to settle your creditors. That's those that you purchase. Uh, on credit from. So from here, you can see that the number also reduced from 68 to 65, indicating that the company has been as improved in terms of settling its creditors um, earlier than in previous year. Then you have the profitability indicators. These are the indicators that talks about, that shows the level of profit. This is very important because it will help you to keep tab on your costs profitability indicators like uh, net profit margin, which talked about the, the relationship between the profit over your sale. So it normally takes into consideration the profit after you have deducted all the expenses. So your net profit margin uh, shows that, shows that relationship. 
Then you have the net income to assets that talks about the relationship of your total net net profit over your over your total assets. So it shows you again the the percentage of income that you're able to drive from the asset that you deploy into the business. Then return on investment. This is very popular in in the investment world. We have people ah my ROI, my ROI, my return on investment is basically saying this is the return I get. Express it in form of uh, over the uh, investment that was made in the business. So that's the uh, capital employed. So by the time you look at it, and then you also um, you also compare it against the previous year. You will see you'll be able to establish whether you are making profit, uh, whether you are you are prof more profitable in current year than in previous year. Now, um, basically, these indicators they are more mathematical in nature in terms of you be enough to pick all those numbers from the financial statement. All of these are derived from the financial statement that I. I presented here. And if you look at them, you will see that looking at all of these indicators and be, being able to express them and look at the numbers to say what happened this year against a previous year, or probably what happened in this company or the, the ratio you are determining in a particular company, say company A, as against company B, can actually tell you whether this organization are doing well or, or not, you know, that is why it is very, very important that looking at the financial statement, you will see that they are able to tell you. And if you now go further, you can actually go further to express your own financial statement information against some other information about your business that are not even in the financials, like the total number of customers, if you have your customers, you have different clients in different places, you have them being broken down into different demography, you can actually establish what, you can establish some indicators, you can derive some indicators by the time you look at your numbers. You know, then also if you compare or use your financial information against market information, let's say the market size industry data that you're able to gather and you compare, you can express your company's data against some of these uh, external information, market information to really see how your company is performing as against the industry. So here we talk about marketing, so market size, industry data. Employee information is also, can also be used, okay can also be used to determine, uh, uh, to, to also give you some insight into how, the business, how, the, how, how an organization is doing. So, and all of this as a, as a business owner or as a financial manager, or as someone that is interested in the well-being of an organization, you can pick this information that is derived from the financial statements and use it to set some KPIs KPIs means key performance indicators that you can always check regularly to see whether the, the, the company is going in the right direction or the company needs some form of intervention or the company needs some form of support or whether there is a, there is a well-being issue that needs to be attended to, right? So, and as I said, the focus should be more on the trends how this is, how the performance fair between last year and this year, and how the performance fair between, uh, be, between a company and another company that is similar and which you are also, uh, which, you are, which you are comparing with, not specifically on the numbers. Focusing on the numbers alone will, be, will, be, will not be really productive as against focusing on how things have moved. Because if you look at the trend, that is when you can see whether you make more sales between the months, between certain months compared to some other months. Or you are, uh, you, you can actually 
set some KPIs around the um, gross, like for instance, you want to know your gross income or your gross revenue over a period of time. So let's say you, you have your financial statement or the financial statement of your organization being prepared on a monthly basis, looking at the gross income on, for each month, it will give you an insight on which months you are making more sales or more income. And that can also help you to ask yourself what drives these growth, you know? Or if you see that the, the, inc the revenue are reducing, you can also use that to answer the question, why are the revenue, why is the revenue reducing? Why are the income reducing? You can also set direct KPIs around direct expenses. Why, where are my costs? Where are they going? So all of this will help you. Then for using, it, using these uh, uh, indicators, using those information as against external information like customer uh, marketing, market information, you can determine your company's market share. You can know what is the portion of the total market revenue that your organization alone is generating and how you can improve on it. You can also set average revenue. You can determine average revenue per each staff that you have engaged. You can determine average revenue by, by per, per client as well as, uh, as, uh, as, well as um, net profits, net profit margin, gross margin that we have discussed and, and uh, that we have discussed earlier. So all of this information that is derived from the financial statement will go a long way in helping us to be able to ascertain the well-being of the organization. And it will also help us to, to, to be able to chart the cost of the organization in the right direction. So thank you very much. I, I will look forward to your questions or your comments, or uh, if you need any clarification, you can raise it at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, really, 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 thank you very much, Mr. Uh, that, that, that was a good time, although it was very technical. I I must thank you greatly. I'm uh, sorry, I'm battling with um, the, you know, the problem of <laughs> Wi-Fi, uh, broadband in Nigeria is a difficult thing. There are questions already. Uh, uh, Mr. Chris Adeni is raising his hand. Um, I know he's also is a um, fantastic accountant. Now, let's appreciate, first appreciate what Mr. Atusu Luyemi has done. This is a technical subject and uh, a lot of us still have quite a lot to learn, uh, you know. As someone might, like me, although I've worked in two banks, my my uh, my strength is not in finance. Uh, absolutely, there's somebody on this platform. When I saw how finance was, and I was asked whether I would want to be a full-time banker, I told them no, I would not want to be a full-time banker. They offer me the opportunity. Because I felt I would be struggling with those, with that, that is their strength. However, even when we don't need to be a full-time financial specialist, except we know the business um, numbers, we cannot succeed. I will want uh, Mr. Adeni, also Mr. Luashe Yolanio, and the two of them, I think they are raising their hand. Uh, no, one is an appreciation, all right? Um, thank you, Mr. Baba and Dema Jekodomi. So, Chris, and then you can unmute yourself, and then we, 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 whether it's a question or a comment that you want to make, we can have that conversation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone on this platform. Mm. My name is uh, still Chris Adeni, also <laughs> a professional colleague of my, my brother, uh, Mr. Tosi. I appreciate your presentation. You are a pride to our institute. You've done justice to this paper. But my, my area is not about questioning, 
but to add a, one or two comments about the uh, uses of financial statements. A while ago, I was trying to check on Corporate Affairs Commission on companies that have been registered since 1995. That client was trying to get something from CAC and he was replied by being told that, look, your company is inactive. Most companies, particularly private companies, don't give attention to filing of annual returns to Corporate Affairs Commission. And financial statement is a component of what you should file annually. By the time I calculated all the penalties and the fees, everything was going to about 250,000 naira. The guy said, can you help us by talking to the people there? And I told him clearly, everything is being done online by CAC now. So if you have uh, outstanding annual returns, this is the time for you to begin to look at the accumulated debts that you have there. Once again, I want to appreciate the presenter. I also want to appreciate the platform. Thank you very much, Brother Tunde Uji. You are doing a wonderful job. And I believe at least the little we are able to take from here will really help us in our growth in business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll call Mr. Alonso to intervene, but please, so, someone is, uh, we are expected to mute our microphone. Someone is even playing music. Please, we are professionals. This is not supposed to be, please. Uh, just show regard for everyone that is on this platform. Mr. Lawrence, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chris Adeni. Very good intervention. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, I have a question and a, a comment. The question is, um, Mr. Tusi has operated in Nigeria before. I know he's not based in Nigeria now. Are there, are there industry benchmarks? That's the way to put it. Are there industry benchmarks for these financial statements? And I will explain. <clears throat> From your explanation, from, from your presentation, it sounded like if a, con a company, if the, uh, what they call receivables days on hand in, in banking, if in finance, if, if, if it, sh it shortens, you, you consider that an improvement. Uh, if the payments days on hand, in other words, the, if, if payment period is elongated, you probably consider that in finance as a, as efficiency. But if you are an industry, you are a firm operating in an industry, you are competing with other firms in that industry. If you drive your staff to collect receivables faster than the industry collects the receivables, you know you won't have customers. Just as if you pay Earlier than industry pays, it means that you are, really, you are actually not efficient. You are not taking advantage of what they call cyber, uh, 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 what they call cheap zero cost money. So I want to ask: Are there industry benchmarks? In other words, if somebody is in food and beverages, have you? Is there a benchmark that has aggregated the whole industry and say, okay, this industry, this is? what color ratio should be, this is what uh, total gas should be, this is what a receivable news or none should be, all such stuff. I then industry benchmarks and so that a, a company can check itself against the industry because a company should actually check itself against the industry to know whether they're doing well or they're not doing well. That's the question I have. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lawrence. So it's, uh, it's over to you. I'm sure there are other interventions uh, that we can take, although our time is, is, is running. Okay. Mr. Thank Riyami, can you can you react to that very fast? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for, uh, thank you, um, Daddy Chris Adeni, for, for the additional insight <laughs> that you, you put in there on the filing of annual returns to CAC. 
it is very important that we also use this medium, as you have said, to mention this and to reiterate that fact that it is very important for businesses to file their uh, returns with CAC. First of all, as you have said, it will help them to, to avoid paying unnecessary penalty, which can be very high and can actually mean additional liability, additional obligation uh, that, uh, for the business. So again, it, it can also drain the little resources that a business has. So I will advise that in addition to the fact that you will enjoy insights from preparing financial reports of your organization, it is very, very important that uh, businesses also um, imbibe the culture of filing their returns um, annually to, to CAC. And failure to do that is uh, being given inactive status. Thank you very much for that. Um, for that. Then uh, to Dikin Lawansin's question on industry benchmark for ratios. Yes, there are industry benchmark. And again, you can, as a business owner or as a business manager, you can set up your own benchmark and say, as far as our business is concerned, this is what is LD for us. Anything short of this is not LD. So it is very, very possible. It is best practice for you to set benchmark for yourself. That's internal bench, benchmark. And again, there are some specific industry where there have been uh, benchmark set for them. Like as you mentioned in the banks, we know that for banks in Nigeria, they have the, their own cash reserve requirements. This time around, it is more or less, uh, it is, it is it usually set to them by the regulator, which is the banks, which is the CBN, right? So we also have in insurance sector also, we have in different industry, the industry participants looks and also the regulators, they look into the activities and say, what is the best ratio? What is the best indicator of well-being in this industry? You know, and each of them has been able to set. I cannot, I don't have most, most of the uh, recent um, ratios or re recent benchmark for each of these. Probably in another session, we can begin to look at what are the ratios or what are the benchmark for well-being in each of the industry that we have. But this is also another um, area that we can really explore to really see how, to really assess how our organization fares when it compares to the uh, industry benchmark. Thank you very much for that uh, question. Then the, uh, are there any other question there that I've missed? Uh, no, there are comments. Okay, so uh, for... there are comments. Uh, uh, this is my uh, Dr. Lawrence Milfire. I thank you very so much for the lecture well delivered. With IFRS, the word balance is now statement of financial position. It is time that the financial statement is supposed to show the strength and health of an organization. However. We creative accounting being practiced by most organizations. This may not be true. The balance scorecard can be used as an effective means to determine the organization's health and well being. The balance scorecard. This is from the balance scorecard consists of finance, customer satisfaction, business process, learning, and growth. Thank you very much, Dr. Lawrence Emil Paria, who is also. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 also in, into the business of accounting. And Louis Omilo said, wow, that was insightful. Thanks to Mr. Oluyemi. If my financial statements, uh, if my financial statements are self indicator, uh, tell me my business is sick, where do I get the prescription? In other words, uh, financial statement only backward looking or into the future. Thanks again. That's from Louis. Gave for a limited liability company, a public company. Ask for SEC. And then, uh, thank you, Mr. Otosi Oluwaiemi Otosi. 
for schooling some of us, particularly trying to simplify a technical subject. I know because our organization is trying to set things straight. I know because our organization has been trying to set things straight. Uh, okay, so, I mean, I, I hope you can respond uh, to those issues, those questions, issues, and then we, we run to a close. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lawrence Imiokwaria. Thank you for that uh, additional comment and insight that you have provided on the use of balanced scorecard. It is very, very, very useful. And again, um, the focus is just to try to be to be less technical. Although again, I still get the feedback that we have been more or less technical. But the balanced scorecard is well-rounded. It actually helps to uh, unveil the health indicator very well, more than what the financial statement would do, because it covers uh, virtually it, it covers the the entire business. Financial statement deals only with the more or less with the finance section, fi financial health. But again, coming from the perspective of the whole enterprise, customer satisfaction, business process, ability to learn and grow within the organization, they all come together to determine the, the, the well-being or to talk about, to assess uh, the well-being of the organization. Mr. Luis Omilo, thank you very much for your question. Now, the, the good thing about financial statement is that it is an indicator and it is also a prescriptor. So you can get prescription when you identify that in terms of financial health, your business or your organization is sick, you can get the prescription right there also from the, uh, from the financial statement by asking relevant questions. Like I said, when you compare numbers in the financial statement against another number, it gives you the ratios, right? And that will trigger questions. So by asking relevant questions, by, um, by looking at different ways to improve those numbers, improve the level of your reporting, by, uh, when, you, when you monitor those, uh, those financial statements or uh, numbers on, from time to time, you will not only be looking backward, but it will be helping you to prepare into the future. For instance, if you, have, you are experiencing declining sales, and you can see that from your financials. You, it will help you to prepare into the remaining period to see how you can increase sales. Another example is, uh, is an example that comes to mind is an example of a, of a, of a salesman that has been recording dwindling sales at certain points. Then let's say in the, in, uh, from month one to month six, then at the end of month six, after looking at it, looking at the information provided from the trend of income that you have experienced, you can actually decide to change the narration by changing your strategy. So financial statement information feed into your strategy. It feed into your, your, your operational plan. It feed into your, 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 the tactics that you decide that you decide to put into play. It feed into how you are going to also motivate your team to be able to drive a, 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 a better performance and improve the well-being of your organization. Um, so thank you very much for, for, for that. Um, again, for a limited liability company and a public company, how is the FS useful for SEC? That's for Security Esteem Commission. This is coming from Tunde Adewusi. So the question is uh, how the financial statement is useful for SEC. And uh, SEC, as you, as you know, they are regulators, right? So they regulate the companies that are quoted on the stock exchange. They regulate companies that are seeking the uh, seeking from the public uh, to, to invest their, their money with them, right? So all of these companies in the interest of the, of, the, of, the, of the general public or the investing public, the SEC, the, which is the Security and Estate Commission is created to regulate uh, those activities and to provide some form of oversight function. So the financial statement is useful for them because SEC being a regulator can see where the, the how the company is performing and they can use that information to also assess 
uh, the kind of the level of funding or the level of um, finance that the company is trying to raise and be able to guide or, or stop that 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 that, uh, that transaction if they see that is going to be injurious to the to the general public or to the investing public. So I believe uh, that answer your question. They look at it. They provide monitoring control. They provide a monitoring oversight on the activities of, of fund managers, activities of um, companies that are listed and that are raising fund and are using public fund, so that they will be able to prevent um, loss of funds, loss of money, loss of investment, and also boost investors' confidence. Because again, all of, this info, uh, the, all of the information provided by the financial statements, they are very useful. And the, 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 because of the stewardship arrangement between those who own the business, those who invest, the business, invest into the business, and those who manage that business, so you have a uh, confidence level there that the owners of the business want to be able to rely on that uh, financial statement. And that is also another area that SEC comes in to say, to be able to provide that uh, level of confidence from the financial statement that is submitted to them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Luyami. Uh, on behalf of all the participants, good men, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a big thank you. Uh, for sharing a great insight, depth of experience, uh, you know, with us. I want to thank my colleagues, you know, from the Touchstone team, Muiwa uh, Labiti, Paul Gudipe, Ibrahim Bawoyami, Buki Oluyami, and others for making this possible. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday when we are going to have another conversation. We have just about uh, five minutes so, you know, what you can call the after, after party. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Mrs. Inkira Karewe for coming, Mrs. Boa, Dickiness Boa. Um, uh, uh, you know, is it, a it, 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 by vocation, I'm the Reverend Akim Ogunero. Thank you very much, Dada Lubenga. I did a lot for Akim Ogunero. Uh, Dr. Lawrence Emilio thank you for your intervention. Mr. Kendi Lawansi, Uruashe Yolanio, uh, Austin Oberto, uh, Mr. Uriadini, uh, Janet Rupavi, and uh, you know, uh, you know uh, many others. In another two minutes, we'll just, you can unmute and say hi, and then uh, that will just be, uh, that, just, that just will be just about three, three minutes. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Uh, we'll, we'll be glad to see you next week, uh, Saturday, by 3 p.m. As, as a parting message, the journey of a thousand miles starts by taking a step. You can't produce financial statements without keeping records. Let's invite the culture of keeping records. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you much, very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And say hi. Uh, Thank you Benjamin. Much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are not a disappointment. Olu Atosi. Thank you, sir. Olu Yemi. Good afternoon, sir. Olu Yemi. Thank you so much oh, for your lecture. You are not a disappointment uh, to the institute. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. I thought, uh, I, yeah. I, who will talk about this institute here now? <laughs> <laughs> all professionals are not supposed. All professionals are not supposed to be disappointed to their institute. They, <laughs> they end, they end. That's why it's different from a degree program. Is I mean, I mean, what do you think? That's 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 what it is. <laughs> yes, it is end. <laughs> thank all you, right. Thank you for coming. It's good to see you again. Uh, well done. Really well done. That was a that was well really done. Appreciate you. Well Thank you very much, sir. Adekunle, Chimbore. Very good. She's fine. Thank okay, you, sir. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good to see your client. Thank you. Thank you. Power Margaret. Thank you. Olamide, Aye, Yomi, Aje, Yomi. Thank you. Thank you. Olamide. Well done. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, we are we we are an accountant. 
We are none. Mm-hmm. We are also we are beating them with our own. There's no segregation in here. There's no segregation. Accountants are accountants. <laughs> yes, they are all members of IFAC. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank, you, right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, bro. Victor Adenero. Yeah, Victor is there. Yeah. He's the All show. right. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, so, sir. Thank you for. Victor, hi. Hi, thank you, sir. Okay, great, great. Good to see you guys. Now, oh, now thank you, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Eku she uluwa sa. Owa ni uluwa sa gbara dotun. How is work? How is how is life? It's been a long time. I think I need to call yes. you personally. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> I yes. need to call you. Okay, where are you located? We are you in practice or in employment? Uh, I'm I'm in I'm still I'm in practice. Is in practice. I'm with Deloitte. Eh, uh, okay. Ah, uh, I will link up with you. Okay, sir. That's fine. My son is an accounting student, he's, he's looking for a job. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, good. Uh, he finished from Unilag, so you people should mentor him. Okay, sir. For me, we provide the details to you. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, sir. I will call you, sir. Doc, uh, Thank you very Dr. much. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. And you are Thank looking you very, much. very fresh and good. That's uh, great. <laughs> Working with one that. of the big four now. Big four. Big four. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir. So, okay, so have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Please join us. Join us for those of us on the Sunday school beat. Please join us. Don't, don't, don't run. Join us in the next 30 minutes. We have another level. Bro, bro, Benjamin. Ah. Baba Joe. Did I answer? Did I? I didn't talk about your question, right? Or... Uh, no, no, no. So, um, what I saw, what I saw um, the series on, I don't know whose post I, that I saw. Okay, I saw it in the Echo Bank group. Yeah. So, and um, I'm, I'm like five months into my MBA program. Okay. So I'm, um, one of the bottlenecks I'm having right now is um, ACC. So which um, 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 is, which um, is considering um, the gap and the IFRS with a lot of models to look at and it's challenging coming from the tech, tech space and having to and start giving the numbers here and there. So, so I thought it was going to be elaborate so I can take notes. Although I took notes anyway, I took notes, but um, I will personally engage you one one after now, maybe after the Sunday. Really? And then really? positiveness to bring. <laughs> 